All right, guys, we watched uh, Pan 2015 last night, which, guys, I'll be honest with you, I had no idea there was such a movie existed. I mean... I I knew it came out, and I I wanted to watch it, but I never got around to it until last night, so I was real happy that we could. Yeah, I did not know anything about it. I was like... And it was obviously, it didn't do what they probably expected. I mean, it was a, uh, it was supposed to be made by the same people who did um, the Harry Potter series. What? Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what they advertise in the trailer. Uh, I guess it's this just because it's from Warner Brothers. I, I don't know. Did Warner Brothers do Harry Potter? Um, it was directed by Joe Wright, who did uh, The Darkest Hour and Hannah. <laughs> written by Jason Fuchs, who did um, Continental Drift, uh, Wonder Woman. He wrote Wonder Woman. Um, and, of course, like they say this is an alternative story, but it's supposed to be a prequel to the book uh, Peter and Wendy, which the creator of uh, Peter Pan actually wrote uh, a book called Peter and Wendy by the Scottish uh, author J.M. Barry, who created Peter Pan back in the early 1900s, uh, the way my understanding is. And, of course, um, growing up, there was a Peter Pan musical where Mary Martin, uh, Sandy Duncan, who would play Peter Pan because... You know they were little tiny girls and if they put boys in as peter pan they would grow up and get deeper and deeper in the voice because you can <laughs> have them play peter pan because it'd be really tough because it's like you know they'll be one day out there singing their peter pan part and then their balls would drop and that that would end the season <laughs> in the peter pan series <laughs> And uh, and play, I don't know, but that's what it ends up happening because you you know unless you're going to get a man who who's who's a minor for the rest of his life, but uh, you know trying to watch the film and trying not to make too many Michael Jackson jokes is really kind of hard, but I I refrain from it the best I could. <laughs> so uh, and guys, it does fit into what they're they were trying to do because peter and wendy i guess would be um i don't know is that the uh, uh aftermath of peter pan but this is supposed to be i guess the prequel to is supposed to be prequel to peter and wendy which is the 19 uh, uh 11 novel um of course um as we know uh and of course the peter pan or the boy who wouldn't grow up or peter and wendy okay so all three of them are the same so this is the prequel to peter pan basically so this is and and if you listen if you listen to narration you'll say where some people that were friends become enemies and some enemies become friends meaning you know in the next one it's not going to be the same and I really think in my heart, although I don't, uh, you know, can't, uh, you know, we could Google and find out. I really think they were trying to do a series uh, for this film because, uh, you know, they definitely, wanted, oh yeah. my gosh, especially with the way they ended off on some of the characters with, without any like real, uh, what am I trying to say? They didn't put an end to so many loose ties that they were leaving open for a ten potential sequel. Right, and and I think the idea was reason why the trailer. If you look at the trailer, did you ever watch the trailer? Yeah, I watched the trailer first. Okay, yeah, it, it was trying to get this. Uh, the the trailer that I watched was like, oh, from the makers of Harry Potter, and and so they were trying to say, well, you know, now this will be the next series that we'll do is this Peter Pan thing. And it didn't pan out because it was a, a bomb. It only made $150 million. Only $150 million. But it was on a... That's so sad. I yeah. like this movie a lot. I think it's because... So the reason I chose this movie is because baby Lucas as a tiny toddler. Peter Pan was my favorite bedtime story. He was my favorite Disney movie. He was the person I dressed up for. For Halloween several years in a row I just I was so as a toddler stuck on Peter Pan for so many years it was my absolute favorite so whenever I saw this movie come out I was like man I really want to watch this movie 
And uh, a lot of the reason whenever I was older, I want to say whenever I was in middle school, I decided I wanted to be an actor. Right. And I wanted to be an actor to play all these different roles, blah, blah, blah. And one of the biggest, like, my biggest main, like, goal in mind would be, like, what if I could be in the stage play Peter Pan? What if I could be Peter Pan and blah, blah, blah. Right. And that was, like, my big goal because I love this type of character. I love the story behind it and everything. And so I decided to be an actor. And in middle school, I did a lot of plays. I scored a lot of lead male roles, which were really cool and interesting for, you know, me back then. Right. And uh, I ended up not getting cast as Robin Hood one year, and it shattered my little heart. And I, like, gave up on my Peter Pan dream. But I think that might be why I didn't see this movie until now. But it just brought back all the memories of how much I absolutely love Peter Pan. I used to read the spinoff series, Peter and the, Peter and the Star Catchers. Right. Um, just the whole thing. I'd, I'd wanted to see every adaptation. I was just so obsessed with it as a kid. Yeah. It, well, like I said, I remember we had an album of fairy tales. And there was a um, record. And it would go through the fairy tales and one you'd listen to was over was Peter Pan because it was uh, done really well and of course um, uh, going over it and so I do remember some of the things because you, you notice if you listen to the album which was more based on the story it would be it was a little different from the Disney movie uh, I don't know how much difference between uh disney movie and the original book is but i mean there's a slight uh difference i mean one thing it's tough to uh you know adapt the british thing into it this uh this brings into i don't know if they're pushing it this into the world war ii era more or less mm -hmm. <laughs> versus uh which which brings it up to interesting that they've changed the times a little bit so that's changed a little bit so I, I found it interesting because yeah. the Disney, <clears throat> excuse me, the Disney Peter Pan has a sequel to it, I believe, that oh, came yeah. out way when I was like still a baby, basically. Well, I wasn't a baby, but I was really young. I loved it, but it was very different. But that movie also took place in the World War II area. So it was definitely, it definitely contradicted that movie. Not that I don't think they really cared or it mattered, but I thought that was an interesting concept. Well, yeah, the uh, straight to DVD Disney, because Disney was had such uh, popularity with their uh, d films. They come in those clamshells, and then they said, okay, well, let's do this. Let's uh, start doing these straight DVD like they continued the Beauty and the Beast, and they continued all these other things. And it's like, you know, after they lived happily ever after. So now you got to watch what happens after they <laughs> lived happily ever after. After, right. which, is, which is interesting God said because you got to go like well little like mermaid they, yeah <laughs> and little mermaid like did how, so well. uh, <laughs> I guess it's not Disney but a different company made like 12 bajillion Shrek movies yeah and well I mean some went were at theater and then they did uh, I I don't know I think they might have did a television show and that's that's the hardest thing that toughest for me is because like you really can uh jump the shark ruin a series by going overboard with uh because it, it just i don't know you um you can just ruin a series and that's all i can say but when you're a kid you're wanting more i guess you know when you're a child you're you're like craving more of this it's like like i said when i was a kid you know you had to wait three years for the next star wars film so they fill them up in between for this so it's not like that anymore it's like you know uh, i don't know what kids watch what medium them so, so i guess the next thing is once they make a big uh, blockbuster film they'll make youtube videos for these characters i guess what they'll do now because you know i don't think kids rush out and get the straight to video clamshells but yeah i mean my sister-in-law collects the disney clamshells and there are people still today that will go to yard sales looking for the disney clamshells and and you know what I'm talking about the clamshells. If people don't know, like it, the VHSs. Yeah, they're VHSs or yeah. Do you remember the Disney clamshells? The the 
they were. I uh, remember the VHSs. I don't. I don't yeah, they it. were. What were? The, what's different about the clamshells from just a VHS? Well, a VHS, you the know, fact no, that they were in the opening yeah, ones. Yeah, that's a clamshell. That's a clamshell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, explain to everybody what's it, the, what that that was about. Who's under fourteen? It's what? it's like a plastic case, like. I don't know. Beforehand, I guess, video games, or not video games, uh, VHSs came just in, like, a little box instead, but they were coming in these, like, plastic cases that were kind of similar to what video games come in nowadays, but a lot, uh, a lot less durable. It's very, very cheap plastic, I guess. Is that good? Well, I mean, yeah. basically what it was... I was really young. Yeah, well, you got to so. understand, too, is, like, that's the reason why you get so many of these girls going out there and collecting them, because it's there, you know, like I said, Disney would... Basically, another thing, too, is Disney never released a lot of these films to VHS before. That's the thing you got to think about, too, is, you know, Disney was one of the first ones that would be, like... Every year they would re-release the cartoons again to theaters, and a lot of people, why would they do that? Well, you didn't have VHS or DVD, so like you know, like when I was a kid, there I saw no other way to watch these unless it was in the movies. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so oh. yeah, I mean, like when I, I saw, that. <laughs> yeah, when I saw Jungle Book, it was a re-release back uh, probably late seventies, early eighties, and uh, because I think Jungle Book was released in the sixties. And so they, it was re-released, and that's how I saw it. I think the last really cartoon. See, I mean, like Disney was struggling in the early '80s, late '70s. I think the last one was like uh, the Sorceress and the Stone, and the which was like really dark. A lot of people had problems with it, and then of course, the Fox and the Hound, and, and I think people were like. Oh ready. my god, yeah. that one was so sad. I loved it, but yeah. it was very sad. Right, and that's where people were like thinking Disney was about done. <laughs> I mean, I mean seriously. I mean, because Fox and the Hound, Sorcerer in the Stone, those kind of things were so dark. The Black Cauldron, uh, that was like Disney being really, really dark. And, uh, and of course, like uh, The Seeker of Nim came out, which were like rebels of disney who broke off and wanted to do more adult cartoons and uh it was uh not as good disney animation because disney was like the top animator anyways don't what well, we got on disney okay so let's talk about peter pan 2015 <laughs> grossed 128.4 millions against a production budget of 150 dollar 150 million dollars uh, did not make what it wanted to make. Uh, didn't really probably have good marketing because I knew nothing about it. So what's this movie about, Lucas? <laughs> Tell us. So. so it's basically it is kind of an alternative story of Peter Pan, but it takes place before. Peter Pan gets to Neverland. It's like his backstory uh, and like how he grew up, how he came to Neverland, and basically how he became Peter Pan is what this story is about. And essentially, he starts out, uh, the movie starts out, and it shows his mom giving him up at this like boys' home orphanage. And leaving him this little necklace and being like, oh, I love you so much. And like, say, leaving a note with him and saying, you know, one day you're going to understand why I did this. And then it's because that I love you. Uh, and she runs off and then it just skips ahead in time to whenever he's like, I don't know. I want to say he's like 11 throughout the rest of the movie. <laughs> I really wasn't paying too much attention to his age, but well, he was, he's I pretty young. I don't think that's important because, and you know, because it's never been important to the Peter Pan story. Mm -hmm. I mean, because yeah, but essentially, he's a young boy. Yeah, is he's silly? He's a young boy in his little young boy's home, and he's made friends. And 
uh, boys from the orphanage that he's at are starting to go missing. And he's like, where, where are these guys going? Where are they disappearing to? And they stay up all night and end up seeing uh, boys be taken by pirates in the night. And the pirates come and end up taking all of the boys from the orphanage and capturing them and bringing them to Neverland to be like... Uh, I don't want to say slaves, but basically to go work in this mine where they're looking for, I don't remember what they called it, but it's essentially fairy dust in yeah. the mines. It's, it's yeah, it's fairy uh, something rather, they called it some sort of, they did give it a name. <laughs> they yeah, they, they get a few names and I was just like, whoa, every time they throw a new one out there, I'd be like, all right. Uh, it's uh, it's like adamantanium or whatever that stuff is in Avatar. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And and that's another that's issue that you're dealing with too, because like Avatar had that whole uh, adamantanium and thing, and they were basically nueve or naves or whatever. And so uh, so basically, I just went, why are you mining fairy dust out of a coal mine? Like, I feel like there'd be a lot more, like, they said, okay, okay, I get it. They said, you know, we've harvested it all, everything else, and we're going in the mines for it now. I understand that, but, what, like, okay, I'm thinking of a fairy. I'm not thinking a fairy is going to be chilling up in some mine, you know, be, yeah. like, searching the trees and the forest and, like, in a mine. I just feel like that's a really stupid idea. But anyway, that's where they are. And I thought it was a joke. Like, they're miners and they're miners. They're minor miners. So I thought well, not was, all of them are miners. That's something, too, they that, 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 yeah, that kind of was kind of weird to me because I'm like, you know, because this is Neverland and whatever, and everybody does grow up in Neverland because I always thought, I don't know, I'm just going by... No, that makes so much sense, though, because... Well, okay, here's here's my hypothesis, okay? Okay. So, so no one grows older on Neverland, you know? That's that's the, the belief. You know why? And, and I can tell you why. Why is that? And it was shown by Blackbeard in this movie. It's in the fairy dust stuff. He uses mm. it as a rejuvenant. So, so when, whenever the fairies are hiding, then there's not a lot of fairy dust, I guess. The fairies are in there. hiding and sealed away. So maybe at this point on Neverland, people are people are growing up. Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Because yeah. there's no fairy but, dust. Okay, so you see, you're trying, trying to make sense of this. I, <laughs> I did not expect that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But I'm yeah, I think so that'd be a powerful good. that milk will not even hurt me. That was a line from Ernest and Scared Stupid. That <laughs> oh yeah, that's my favorite line. I am so powerful that milk won't even hurt me. Anyways, <laughs> see, you've actually made sense of this. So this film is not that dumb because, like, fairy dust is not released. Therefore, they grow old. If fairy dust is released and all the fairies are out there. And I'm, I'm wondering, wait a minute, it's pixies too. That's what, it was pixiedom, I think that's what they called it. And It's pixie dust? Are we saying fairy dust? Yeah, fairy dust and pixie dust. I'm pretty sure that's a synonym for a drug. Well, we know it is. But <laughs> basically, if the world does not have <laughs> pixies, if the world does not have pixie. Uh, if the yeah, the people are growing old. That's also yeah. why the other people can't fly, I guess. Cause, or, uh, I don't know. But yeah, and I remember in the cartoon for Peter Pan, he'd always say it took pa faith, trust, and pixie dust to fly. Well, he'd always be like, here's some pixie dust. I always remember... You're flying now. Uh, hold on, man. Let me check on my recording here. Of, um, I always remember it was... I always think happy thoughts. If he thought happy thoughts, mm -hmm. he could fly. Which, uh, so, you know, of course... I would never be able to fly. 
I never. Th- That's so sad to know now. I just be like. You don't have happy thoughts. You don't. Really I know. guess we're still nice. recording over here. I'm one of them. What do you mean you guess? <laughs> no, I'm just. Is that like, a, is no, that I've got a yes two recording. No? I've got two recordings going on, so. Okay. So it doesn't matter. I just rec- started recording on this thing over here. It makes me so mad that you have to check up on this stuff here once a But it's because so many things are going. I've got. All right, so Pixie Dust, uh, 2015 film, Pam. So we were discussing, if you read Peter Pan, you watched the movies, Mary Martin, all that thing, you know, if Peter had, thinks happy thoughts, he flies. And I do remember there's a lot of, uh, you know, tr- uh, Trixie, whatever her name was, who's what was, was a fairy... <laughs> The fairy Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell? Tinker, yeah, Tinkerbell. Dude! <laughs> Trixie? I don't know why I'm thinking Trixie. Well, I'm thinking Pixie and I'm thinking Trixie. Trixie. Anyway, hey, Trixie. Trixie Bell. You know, that's, you know, I was like, Trixie Tinkerbell. Um, anyways, Tinkerbell, if she, uh, let go of her fairy dust, which I assume is just fecal matter from fairies. And so, um, it ends up, you know, um, Peter Pan would just have magical powers from the fecal matter from Pixies, or Pixie does, so basically. Don't breathe it in because you can get haunt the virus from it, just like, uh, my mouse fecal matter. But the bottom line is, then you want to make sure it's wet too, you don't want to keep it dry. So, um, and plus don't sniff it, get in your eye or anything like that because you can get, it causes hallucinations. You'd be seeing like Elvis in your refrigerator or something like that. Elvis in your refrigerator? Yeah, I'm just gonna go to a peanut butter and jello sandwich. No, I mean a peanut butter and banana sandwich hill. And, and so, don't. If you see him in your refrigerator, I think you need a therapist. Yeah, or, or pixie dust. But basically, don't breathe it. You can, uh, do anything else, but don't breathe it. So, (laughs) breathe it or sniff it or eat it. But it's okay to sprinkle on you because it apparently, or, or wait a minute. Now, uh, the Blackbeard, he would breathe it in and then he would cause him to be younger. He'd get like super young. Yeah. yeah that was such a weird, weird concept. I don't know. Cause it showed him like being really old all of a sudden. And he was like, guess what? I'm not, I'm not old anymore. I, yeah. I want to know. I want the facts. How, how often does he do this rejuve, rejuvenating routine? Okay, how how much pixie dust goes into each ship flight? You know, they're like saying that they're sc- they're scarce on this pixie dust dust uh, resource. Well, it's like okay, well, give us some kind of like numerical quantity so we yeah. can relate. To- I mean, I understand this might be a children's movie, but I want to understand what's going on. Well, you know, they're I mean, just like, there's no more of this stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, mind. they actually put a lot of thought into it compared to most children's movies. I mean, yeah. I mean like I said. <laughs> And and my science behind this is like, you know, all this dust is, you know, fecal matter coming from the, you know, fairies and pixies. It lands on the plants, right? And the plants, you know, put out, uh, you know, carbon dioxide. Well, you know, mixed with the pixie dust. And that's the reason why they're able to stay young. That's my scientific theory behind that. That's the reason why this works. Because then they're breathing it in? Exactly. Whoa. Yeah, because remember, because without plants, you know, uh-huh. you don't have the ability to have any, trees. Exactly. So you got all this fecal matter from the fi- pixie dust that's coming out to give them the world. They're pollinating the trees. Yeah. Into life elixir. Yeah. Things. But I, I believe their their gassy matter though smells really sweet, like an orchid or something like that. I don't think it's like. You know, smells like cow manure or like methane, because it would fairy be fairy farts. Yeah, exactly. Fairy farts are really sweet. Like that's that's just smell. It's got a sweet smell to it. Anyway, <laughs> where were we? All right, so let's get into this film. So it bombed at the box office. <laughs> Sad. Let's, okay, we'll just get into, okay, real quick, the storyline is, I'll go the storyline, then I'll let you go over, we'll go over actors together, try to knock this thing okay. out, because we're already right. here, 11.30, and we're already talking about fecal matter from Pixies. Uh, Are we restarting? What are we, okay, I'll follow you. 
Okay, well, I'm just going to go over the storyline real quick, and then we'll go into you. I'll let you go into actings and all that good stuff. Okay, guys, really quick. This story is about uh, it's Peter and Wendy, and the prequel to Peter and Wendy, which is AKA Peter Pan. Okay, so they really, to me, do a good job to try to set it up before Peter Pan. We want to know what happened to Peter Pan before he became Peter Pan. This is what happened. He was in an orphanage. He was there and with a bunch of Irish nuns that were really, really evil that would like hold back rations and things like that because this is during World War II when they were having the rationing in Britain. And see, so that's something Americans will never face is the fact that we weren't attacked during World War II because Germany and Japan, it was very hard to get planes over to America <laughs> versus like in Britain, Germany's like right across the border, you know, and so it was pretty easy to get planes in England and guess what they did and they bombed him a lot and they had to ration their food and so these Irish nuns are taking the food for themselves and they weren't starving they were starving the children real evil children but you know the Peter Pan he had found a letter with his buddy uh, I can't remember buddy's name was Nip or Tip or something like that and so they go up into the attic and they start finding this these letters and they found out how special Peter Pan was that his mom had to do it for bravery reasons and so forth and uh, I wasn't really clear I guess a lot of the bravery I, I think she was a spy I don't know anyways drops him off in the orphanage tells him how special he is the Irish nun finds the letter and tells him you're not special and then he goes off on the nun and these nuns are like really mean evil fat and ugly and so uh during the night they're during a raid of german uh, flight there uh, the the pirates come on these ships that fly and take the children back to neverland and neverland they have to mine like lucas said for abtanium or pixie uh pixis pixie tim or something like that. And then we find out that some of these, these children grow up because, uh, they grow up because there's no pixie dust in the air. Okay. Cause, uh, and so during this time, we're introduced to Blackbeard the pirate and we get into this song that was so random that came out of nowhere that was like, you know, and I thought, oh my gosh, I thought they, it was just so Hamilton-ish, you know, type thing. And they're actually singing Nirvana's Smell Like Teen Spirit. And even Peter Pan knows the lyrics of that, even though this is during the time of war too. Mm-hmm. I'm not hating, I'm just saying. Uh, so, you know, all this time going through all this and then, uh, you know, we meet Blackbeard, who is played by our biggest actor here, the highest paid actor here, probably Hugh Jackman. And, I didn't uh, realize it was him the entire time. He, he did not look like him. And mm-hmm. good for him. Kudos for the makeup, mm-hmm. which is what supposed to actors are supposed to do. They're supposed to act like other people. And he does a good job of that. Yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed his character. He, he played it very well. It was very over the top. The f- funniest thing about that Nirvana scene, where they're singing Teen Spirit, is like smells like Teen Spirit is um, is watching that one kid yelling at the top of their lungs, <laughs> and it's going and that thing is going through some sort of puberty. everyone was just so hyped it was insane and it was out of nowhere you know it's like okay we just got kidnapped from this orphanage and then all of a sudden bam musical <laughs> yeah and i was like maybe this is gonna be a musical i got all yeah. excited there for a minute yeah me too i was like oh what this was so good no it was like that and then i think there was like one other instance of like maybe yeah. half a song yeah, and I think when the natives were singing um, the version of a, another song, but we'll get into the natives here in a minute. So we actually introduce a new character here while they're mining. Uh, this character is uh, played by a pretty good actor, and he was just so uh, starstruck with Hugh Jackman. I believe uh, his, uh, what is his name? Is it Garrett Hedlund? Yeah, Garrett Hedlund. He's an actor, model, and singer from Scandinavia. Uh, he played in Friday Night Lights, Death Senate, Tron's Legacy, uh, On the Road, you know, uh, Country Strong, different f- films like that. 
but he was so enamored by um Hugh Jackman he was like oh my gosh yeah well, he's such a good actor I don't know what to do <laughs> it's like yeah what do I do he's like because Hugh really really takes it. and anybody he plays Peter Pan goes over the board with him I mean Dustin Hoffman when he played him in the Hook was really really <laughs> I say, and, and it's like when I was a kid, when you watch the Mary Martin ones or the Sandy Duncan ones and all those, uh, you always, the hook was always the most flamboyant character and which it kind of explains how pirates were able to keep the lonely nights, uh, very, uh, entertaining because there was no, uh, uh women there, um, which was okay because, uh, they was, had their booty. They had their flamboyant <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> but at the same time, they go to like pillage booty. and rape, and it's like, <laughs> not in this movie. Not in this movie. This is, uh, this is, I think this is, a, what is the rating on this movie? It is uh, PG-ish, I guess. Probably like PG. I don't know, guys. Because I don't think you can get away with a G in there because, you know, there's just too much violence in this film. And a lot of people praise the action of this film. Nobody dies in this film. Yeah. They didn't show any kind of death or anything in the film, which I, I found interesting. So it was definitely for a very young audience. But at the same time, they had some, like, adult jokes in there and stuff slipped in. It was kind of weird, but yeah. And then, oh, and the other song is Blitzkrieg Bop. They do that song, too, which is done. Why? <laughs> and then, of course, uh, uh, Who decided on that? I don't know. It, it's just like so random. But I, you know, I think yeah. it was designed for kids, and I think kids, which I don't like know. I, I I don't remember if I had, you know, you know, the kids that I, you know, my girlfriend had or whatever. I never remember playing Nirvana. I had Mm-mm. a girlfriend who was a big Nirvana fan. <laughs> Is that what kids listen to in 2015? Is it? Is that they got they got Disney's version of Nirvana in there? Like, you remember that (laughs) kids bop version? Yeah, kids bop of Nirvana. Can you imagine that? That would just be so sacrilegious to some people. (laughs) I can only imagine kids bop now covering like Cardi B and stuff. God, please don't. I really hope they aren't, honestly. Yeah, they're like, you got your little girl back singing WAP, and you're like, honey, where did you hear that? On my oh kids' bop. Oh, my Bob. gosh. <laughs> what would they be on now? I remember when Kids Bop, like, Kids Bop 7 came out. They're probably on, like, Kids Bop 635. Were you too, you were too old for Kids Bop, right? Uh... Whenever I was really young, I had a CD player and, like, one of the very early Kids Bop soundtracks, but it, I was only into, like, one or two. The and I was more really young, I so. talk to you, the more darker your life becomes to me. <laughs> <laughs> I told you how, like, incredibly shit, like, oh my gosh, yes, I was, I was, I was born and raised in this little box under a rock, under a larger rock. That was me. Yeah, and then only Thor can remove the rock to release you. Basically. I'm like Simone from Gurren Lagan. I just have to pierce the heavens with my drill and get out and see the world. You have to have you seen Gurren Lagan or did that make no sense? Uh makes no sense to me, but it- <laughs> I never heard of this film. I don't know where you pulled this film out. It was like out of... It's uh, my turn to show you movies. Yeah, because 2015 is like... I, I, I'm i still planning on getting you guys to see the movie. And, uh, and when I talk about the movie, which is supposed to be the worst, best film ever made... And what do you I, mean the movie? The movie. I'm not. I'm not going to name the name yet, but I'm planning to get all of y'all to do it because it's like the one everybody says. It, there was a documentary called "Best of the Worst," and that's where that terminology comes from. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, because it's so much that leading up to this. Um, all right. So, how did we get to? Okay. Let's put it this way. Pan and Hook develop a relationship. Okay. And it's a friendship. 
And in this time, we find out that Hugh Jackman has had enough of Peter being such a rebel, so he makes him walk the plank, and he says, think happy thoughts, as he kicks him down there, and of course he almost falls and hits the ground, then he realizes, oh, I can fly, and then he realizes he can't, and he lands and hits the ground. So they, he throws him in prison, and now Blackbeard is worried. By the way, Blackbeard is Hugh Jackman's character. And why is Blackbeard worried now about Peter Pan? Because there's a prophecy that a flying boy will come and kill him and take over his, foil his plot to right. extinguish the fairies. So what ends up happening is, so Hook sees a way for him to get out. The Blackbeard is frightened of the boy, don't know what to do about the situation so Hook who is friends with uh, Peter Pan devised a way to get out out of the mine and go into where we're going to the jungle which uh, includes uh, where we'll meet Tiger Lily and the natives from there and then what they will elaborate on the prophecy about him and Blackbeard and of course it's about him believing in himself and trying to get to believe in himself and again guys I, I've totally for that stuff is just kind of you know it's not memorable as the Nirvana team spirit stuff but <laughs> and I hate bringing it back up but it's not but it they, was interesting yeah. it was definitely you know it was not expected or, or you know but yeah I I bet the kids loved it. I bet they thought it was really fun. Cause it was right, really hyped up. So. I I'm not much about the books, but I I always felt like when you know I was growing up because you know you watch like J horror and I can connect it to this, but I always thought Tiger Lily was basically she was feared always in the Peter Pan uh, mythos because she was a girl who was kind of like. Uh, made the it was like Peter Pan and all the boys were afraid of her because they hadn't they were not growing up so they weren't uh, to that point where they were uh, attracted to young females and uh, usually that's the reason why boys are scared of girls is because they uh they're they don't when they get that feeling of attraction, they don't know how to handle that attraction and the power that it is because um it, you've got two things. It's like someone says your 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 action is that either I'm going to kill it or I'm going to uh, make love to it. So you've got really two options to do, and that's what I always felt like. That's the reason why I'm going to kill it. Yeah, I'm going to kill it, or I'm going to make kind of drastic, it. don't you think? Well, when you're afraid of something and it causes fear, your natural emotion is to kill the fear thing that causes fear, or to make love to it. Yeah. Because either, basically, let me try to say it in a, let me take Freud out of it for a minute and I'll put on my, um, uh, Jungian hat. Okay, so let's take the Freud okay. hat off and let's put the Jungian hat. Okay. Either you kill the, either destroy the thing that causes fear or you accept the fear. How's that? Okay. Okay, you see what I'm saying? Uh, mm -hmm. Freud would say you either, or you kill it. <laughs> okay. Freud is, a very, yeah. Freud, everything is sexual. Is That's all, yeah. yeah. Everything and then Jungian is basically law and, you know, all that. But but the Jungian thing is I felt that Tiger Lily, because they never could grow up, meaning that they couldn't get to the point of being a man, When because when you become part of being a man is making love or being in love. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the uh, what do you know, thresholds you have to jump over to get to. And that's what I always felt Tiger Lily was, was because everybody feared Tiger Lily in the Peter Pan stories. And the reason was is because she was a female and they knew that basically, you know, you because it was such an unknown territory, they didn't know what females would do to them. So that's the reason they always feared Tiger Lily and because there was always a thing. But the thing was in the book, what happened is Tiger Lily would come out and save them from certain situations because 
Uh, she was older, I guess. And then, of course, like Peter Pan's the only one. I think the reason why Peter Pan is brave is because he accepts that he wants to be a boy and he wants to accept being a boy. And the rest of the boys don't know what they want. Like, they don't know uh, if they want to be an adult. They don't know if they want to be a boy. Everything's confusing to them. So that's the reason why the Lost Boys and all those are not uh, like Peter Pan. So basically, Tyra Legally story is screwed up here. <laughs> Our people say it's an alternate universe. <laughs> it was definitely very interesting. Um, there were critics, and I don't listen to critics because I don't believe have it. Just because some fat dude on the internet said that Tiger Lily was whitewashing the native thing. I don't give a crap. No one gives a care what that dude says. That's not the reason reason to flop because Marvel did the same thing with the bald white chick in uh, Doctor Strange and no way to care. <laughs> Maybe a few fat white guys got on the net and said, okay, you're whitewashing the story <laughs> in Doctor Strange. And everybody was I like... I would have enjoyed to see <laughs> someone... A little more closely better to portray these characters, but that being said, this was done by Warner Brothers. They all had British accents, so yeah. this was done well, by. Well, uh, you know, this is an American film that hired British people, so it's a little different. They consider it an American film, and Hugh Jackman's Australian, really? the other character Scandinavian, but they wouldn't have a British feel to it because the Perry because the, the Peter Perry. Pan story. No, because the Harry Potter thing. People were so into the British thing, and they wanted to give it a little bit more Harry Potter touch to it. Yeah, they wanted Peter Pan meet Harry Potter, basically. It makes sense. <laughs> Does it make yeah, sense? Yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it. But, yeah, it. and and granted, the, probably the original story is British, not taking anything away from us, because British people know how to write, you know. Yeah. Except for yeah, unless you like H.P. Lovecraft like me, but. <laughs> <laughs> who I love my wasp, <laughs> verbose, dark uh, story writing, but that's just me. I'm a crazy guy. Um, importance of Tiger Lily in this spleen. She wasn't annoying at all. She was really good. She was really good. She, uh, they portrayed, they portrayed, uh, I can't speak today. They portrayed her as a really strong character, uh, which was awesome, but like. Well, that's Tiger Lily's always that, cause they always say. Right. She was right. That's what I'm butt. saying too, but they like gave her like, <laughs> so basically the purpose of the tribe in this story is they are, uh, how do I say? They, are the ones who know where the fairies have gone into hiding and they are sworn to protect that secret, right. basically. But Peter um, Pan is the key. And Peter Pan is the key to open this fairy world back up. And yeah, but her, her point in this, why does she stay with them? She, they end up saying that she was like, trained by Peter Pan's mom and they like throw a whole story in that. I didn't really follow that too. Closely, yeah, that was it, where they went too far. To yeah. Me. I mean, everything else, I I just, if you watch the movie, I mean, not the movies, if you read the Peter Pan story, those parents are not really that important. And I struggle with this a little bit considering that this is a boy, but I have a big problem. They talk about whitewashing. Let's talk about male washing. I mean, uh, if you look at my personal opinion, is like... Was she the only female in this character besides the nuns? Oh, well, there was the mermaids, yeah. but that was really literally it. Yeah. Well, so I, I, uh, you know what? I keep on forgetting. Skip what I said. The started. mermaids all looked like one yeah. person. Yeah. Well, screw what I said earlier. Uh, if you read the stories, Peter Pan always, the reason they kidnapped Wendy was because they wanted a, a mother for the lost boys. I remember they said something right, like that. Exactly. Yeah. 
So I can, so now I, I forgot about, I keep on forgetting about that. That was his attachment. Maybe that was an attachment that he didn't have a mother, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Cause it's a little different. Wendy's story's a little different. Wendy's parents are good to her. They just ignore them. Uh, they're just rich and they give them everything they want. Whereas like Peter Pan, see, I get that mixed up. So forgive me guys. There's a difference between Peter Pan's upbringing and Wendy's upbringing. We're just, we just, and it makes sense that Peter would have a rough life because that's the reason why he's the bravest of the lost boys. So yeah, um, okay. I'm cool with that. Yeah. I'm done. They also that. throw it into this, no. uh, this story that he's apparently a fairy prince. Yeah, I, I think that's mentioned in some of the stories too, as well. That he's uh, got some sort of royalty there. Uh, yeah, I like that. I've never heard or been introduced to that. That's like, right. Idea. The the father. That was the portents of that story. Was the father could be human for one time, for one day, mm-hmm. and then he would die. But it was enough time to uh, have sex with his mom. And then they and conceive would, a child. Exactly. I guess. Right. So he had a little bit of time. You got one day left to live. So you like playing on the Barry White, you know, and getting going. And you like, you know, have the kid and everything. You're hoping that everything worked out fine. <laughs> but at the same time, <laughs> he's like, well, if I knew this is what I'd like to be human, I would have been human a long time ago. <laughs> For one day. For one day. So one they day. have a kid. And that's how, yeah, you get that he's part fairy. And that makes sense. Yeah. That's the reason why he's And fine. then that's when the mom abandons him in the other world. She's like, you ain't going to be a fairy until you're older. Sure. Yeah, that's what she said. So I'm lost here. Okay. Like a lost boy. <laughs> We're not even gotten to the point where they get into We're the all lost. Let's, let's, okay, so guys, okay, I'm gonna do it real quick. Okay, so they're at the tribe, they have to build Peter Pan's confidence up, and it doesn't really work, and so, uh, the captain comes in and kidnaps him, and the little pan necklace that he had is the key to open to the world, cause Peter Pan has a Peter Pan, has a pan, uh, necklace, which is a pan is a flute, if you, uh, you know, read mythology. And so they use the pan to open the world of the fairy world, and so now, the um blackbeard has tiger lily and has um peter pan tied up okay by the way hook has left cuz he's t- uh, and uh cuz he found an old ship and he's going to build it up and he's going to go home yeah and said i'm i'm going to go home and of course they try to convince him to stay even though i'm an there. orphan and don't have a home yeah exactly and going through all this stuff and like I said the mermaid story you know just explained why peter pan was birthed so you guys getting it <laughs> if you're lost email me because they've opened up the world uh it's like so they open up this world where they are um in the fairy world and so black beard starts Torching fairies left and right like mosquitoes, and oh, um, and Peter's like, "Stop it! Stop it! Stop torching them fairies!" And they were like, "Okay, all right, uh, I'll do anything." Will you kneel to me? And he would, and he ends up kneeling to them. And so, in the process, why you know he's going to kill Peter Pan? The boat gets bumped, and guess who's on the boat? Or the Millennium Falcon? I mean, the boat. It's We're none other than it. Hook, who has pushed the boat and shook it off. So then there's a big old fight between Tiger Lily and Blackbeard, and we got a fight scene. So where are we at now? Uh, well, basically the fairies are attacking all of the other pirates with their fairy powers, and Peter Pan. <laughs> Peter is like. Okay, well, if I'm going to save my friends now, I have to fly. So he jumps off of the ship to go and save Hook. His hook, like, ends up falling, and he goes to save Hook, and he ends up flying! Woohoo! Because he's only flied, he's only flown the one other time in the movie whenever he was, like, on the ship when he initially was, like, 
uh, before he left the pirate captivity thing. Yeah. But then he ends up. Let me think, man. So he's flying, and Tiger Lily's fighting with Blackbeard. And I can't exactly remember how it goes down after that. Oh, well, it is nothing really. Basically, Peter escapes and meets the fairy named Tinkerbell. Hook returns and fights Blackbeard's right hand man, Bishop, while Tiger uh-huh. Lily duels Blackbeard and the ship tips over, seeing Hook and Bishop plummeting. And Peter conquers his fears and flies to save Hook, then rallies the fairies against the pirates. Because Hook falling is where Peter finds a, you know, find, it gets, thinks of happy thoughts, the saves Hook. The courage to jump and save yeah. him. Leaves him on a cliff, and that, as far as we know, Hook is still on that cliff. And so Peter, Tiger, Lily, and Hook, now Captain of the Jolly Roger, return to London to rescue Nibs and the other orphans who becomes Peter Cruz, the Lost Boys. Hook and Tiger clearly somewhat fall in love, and Peter and Hook reaffirm the friendship. Certain nothing will ever go wrong between them. Dun, dun, dun. And, of course, we, as we know, Hook becomes Captain Hook. Yeah, um, he even calls him Captain Hook at the end, and he's like, yeah. ah, ha, 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 and I'm like, mm, I don't know. We'll never depart as friends. We we're that, always right? going to be friends. Like, I don't think so. <laughs> Probably not. There you go, folks. And, uh, what? Okay, reactions. I really like this movie because it was in the Peter Pan world and it was very, it was very, I liked the animations, I liked the story. I know it was different from what I'm used to, but that's what kept it interesting. So, I thought it was good for a kid's movie. Right. Um... And that's the whole thing is the way we understand is Tiger Lily is old enough to be married according to the uh, Peter Pan stories. So her age is probably right. Um, but you got to understand in early 1900s, some people were still in Arkansas still get married at 13. So Four, uh, yeah, 13, 14. <laughs> I don't know. But this is Britain. I, I don't know. I don't know if British people were. Marrying that. I young. mean, wouldn't it wouldn't it be different rules in Neverland too? Like, how old do you got to be to get married in Neverland? You don't grow old in Neverland. Do they grow old in Neverland? How long has Tiger Lily been like that old? You know. And the way I understand it, she's jealous of Wendy and Tinker Bell later. And of um, Tinker Bell. Yeah, I just don't understand the capacity of that relationship. I do remember Tinker Bell being jealous of. Of, of uh, everyone Wendy, of Wendy and everything, yes. But it's like I remember Tinkerbell being very jealous, but I liked. Yeah, Tinkerbell very possessive. Uh, yeah, little little fairy, little fairy, <laughs> possessive little fairy. <laughs> uh, there's in the other media, uh, but anyways. Uh, Anyways, people forget about the character, and a lot of people didn't. They did not want the the uh, Tiger Lily in other films. See, that's the whole thing about um, Neverland, because you it's a world of uh, pirates, um, Indians. Like you would uh, have been told about probably in Natives and that kind of things, uh, crocodiles. I don't know. Mermaids, siren mermaids. Mermaids. Um, The giant birds were new. Right. So some of this stuff is kind of very linked to the old story and that kind of thing. But a lot of people have... Okay, trying to get this really quick. um, Because we're done with maybe... I'm glad we've... (laughs) No, because it's... uh, If I was a little kid, as a child, yeah, I can see probably liking something like this. As an adult, it just... It 
you know, they borrow from this movie and that movie and that movie and that movie and that movie. And that movie, and that movie and that. I'm still a child, that's yeah. why I like this movie. Um, because, you know, like, the hook, and, and I knew, I said, Hook's going to save him. Hook's going to turn good, just like Han Solo in Star Wars, and he does. Because he's that Han Solo character. Come on, kid. You, you Come know. on, kid. Come on, Come kid. Lord. Look, kid, you just read the lines. It's not rocket science. It does, if it doesn't have to make sense, okay? Just read the lines. <laughs> <laughs> and folks that was my Harrison Ford impersonation uh, uh, real quick we'll just because this basically uh, I don't know how to go over this because I like I said if I was a kid sure mm-hmm. as an adult you're not going to enjoy this I mean it's kind of hard you know I mean well you, you would if your kids are enjoying it but I just Hugh Jackman's really great I love Hugh Jack. Jackman, Hugh Jackman did a really good job in this, and I think, you know, I'd like, and, but I cannot, if I go back to all my Peter Pan movies, uh, every time, um, Hook or Blackbeard or whatever the characters are, are always over the top. Anyways. Your recommendations. You said you liked the film. Uh, I, I did. I did enjoy it, but I, I enjoy the Peter Pan stories so much. So that's the kids. Would you take your kids factor, to so. see it? Hmm? Would you take your kids to see it? I'm never going to have kids. I'm going to well, have a cat. Yeah, I would take my cat okay. to see this what movie. About you? What if you do have kids? <laughs> Take my cat to see this movie. <laughs> what if you did? If, if I had hypothetical children, bless their souls. Mm. Yeah, I would. I show them this movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't have any problem. I just like I said, it's just as an adult, it's it's a little hard. I mean, to, to I liked it because I'm still a kid. Yeah, I, I wish I was a kid in heart. <laughs> I was ten years ago. <laughs> I'm done, folks. I, I, and you guys, uh, subscribe, like, and share. Uh, keep on the comments and, uh, even the spam comments. I'm happy with those. And, uh, <laughs> thank you guys for watching this review. And I don't got nothing to say. We're done with this. Let me go ahead and stop the streaming here. Who's your daddy?